In this video, we're going to look at how to calculate the isoelectric point of basic amino acids. So to demonstrate this, we're going to look at one of the three basic amino acids. In this case, we're looking at lysine. So here's the side chain of lysine. And as I mentioned, basic and acidic amino acids, their isoelectric points are more complicated to calculate because now we have three different acidic groups and three different pKa values to deal with. So in this case for lysine, its carboxylic acid has a pKa value of about two. Its amino group, right, the N terminus of the amino acid, this has a pKa of about nine. And the side chain of lysine has a pKa of about 10.7. As we discussed in the previous video, if all three of these groups are protonated as shown, that means we must be at a very low pH value, one that is lower at all three of these pH values. So we could, for instance, be at something like a pH of one, because one is less than all of these different pKa values. And same as before, we're gonna start at a pH of one, and we're going to gradually increase the pH until all of our acidic functional groups have been deprotonated. Now, starting at a pH of one, as you increase the pH, the first acidic functional group to be deprotonated is the carboxylic acid functional group. Once we exceed a pH of about two, the pH will be greater than this pKa of two, so this carboxylic acid will be mostly in its deprotonated form, the carboxylate. As we continue to increase the pH, the next group that's going to become deprotonated is the amino group on the end terminus of the amino acid. And that's going to happen once we exceed this pKa value of 9 in pH. So we'll have this molecule. So now both the carboxyl group and this amino group is deprotonated. So finally, as you increase your pH even further, at some point, when your pH exceeds this pKa value of 10.7, then the side chain will also become deprotonated. So now all three groups are deprotonated. So what we can consider now then is, what is the charge of all of these molecules? So over here in the beginning, our molecule on the left, where all three groups are protonated, we have a plus one, a plus one, and no charge. So this molecule has a charge of plus two. Our second molecule, it has a plus one charge, a plus one charge, and a minus one charge. If you add them all up, you end up with an overall charge of plus one. Our third molecule, we have charges of plus one, zero, and minus one. So that's a charge of zero. Since this molecule over here has both positive and negative charges, but the net charge is zero, this species is our Zwitter ion. And finally, this last molecule, all we have left is a single negative charge. So this charge over here is minus one. So now that we've identified our Zwitter ion, it is this third molecule over here, we want to calculate the pi, the pH at which the molecules in solution are all in this Zwitter ion form. As we discussed in the previous video, the equation to calculate the pi is pKa1 plus pKa2 divided by two. But here we have to be careful because we have three different pKa's to work with. There are a couple things that you do not want to do. First of all, you do not want to take the average of all three pKa's. You're not just gonna do one plus two plus three divided by three. That is incorrect. You also don't wanna just arbitrarily select the first two pKa values. That's also incorrect. As I mentioned in the last video, the correct approach is to look for your Zwitter ion and then take the pKa value on either side, all right? Which in this case are nine and 10.7. So if we plug in these two values, nine as well as 10.7, we can add that up and divide it by two. 
So this is going to be equal to 19.7 divided by 2, which is going to give us a value of 8.85. So that's the pH value at which your lysine molecule is 100% in its Zwitter ion form in solution.